Hey, everybody. We're here again with Trends Forecaster, famed Trends Forecaster, with good reason. He's very accurate, Gerald Salenti. And we're going to talk about today's jobs report, which a lot of the uh, outlets, including CNBC, are crowing about. Break. That's a couple of seconds. The first jobs report, jobs, job, jobs of 24 is out, and it is Whopper 353,000. 353,000. We have to go in the Wayback Machine. That is the biggest non-farm payroll gains since January of 23, when it was 472,000. Gerald, is it anything to crow about? Well, you know, the numbers are good, but, you know, what were the jobs being created? Let's go back the last several months. Uh, the, yeah, the job numbers are going up, but where are the jobs being created? Uh, social services? service sector, retail sector, not high paying jobs. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they, I mean, you know, so they're going up, but then again, you just have to look at other data. There's an article that just came out on February 1st, back to CNBC. Companies announced the highest level of job cuts in January. Right. 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 Uh, it, it was the second highest layoff total and the lowest planned hiring level for the month of January in data going back to 2009. And this is according to Challenger Gray and Christmas. Okay, so your hiring rates are down to Great Recession levels, the worst of the Great Recession in 2009. See, so yeah, these jobs are being created. But, you know, let's look at the bigger picture. And the, and the bigger picture is, you know, is there any talk about what's going on? That's all that great news that's pushing the markets up. Is there any news about the bank defaults that are on the near horizon and the numbers coming out now, how one after another is having a very difficult time, like NYCB stock plummets. If the big loss is posted less than a year, this is from the toilet paper record, the New York Times, less than a year ago, New York Community Bank Corp looked like one of the big beneficiaries among its peers, blah, 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 blah. And then it goes on how what trouble they're in, because I just mentioned how their stock just, you know, went down big time. And at the end of the article, some of New York Community Bank Corp's problem are its own making, while others reflect its absorption of sing signature. The bank's executives said they would have to sock away more money. Isn't that nice language, sock away more money? Like you're talking to a two-year-old? Sock away more money for losses in loans in commercial real estate. Yeah, yeah. We've been warning about, it's one of our top trends for 2024, banks go bust. You're talking about job report, pushing the markets up. This, this is serious. It's one bank after another. Here, yeah, the data. The office vacancy rate, meaning nobody there, in the United States, 20%. Hmm. Office occupancy rate, according to Castle Systems with a K, 50%. 50%. That's serious stuff. Yeah. And remember the crap that they were spewing out when they started the COVID war back in January 2020. Don't worry about it. It'll come back. After uh, Labor Day weekend, everybody will go back to their office. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. No one is talking about, hardly anyone, anyone, here, it's a tiny article. Hardly anyone talked that this should, this is this is serious. You think what happened last March when um, Silicon Valley Bank went bust, Con Man Bank? Mm. There's nothing, nothing, nothing compared to what you're going to see. Again, how you going? You're not going to pay their loans on these commercial buildings, the office buildings, and the interest rates are way up. And they have to, that's what their loans are based on. They pay interest rates. They don't pay the loan off. They pay, they pay that they, they're not, they got to, 
they're not going to be able to pay off their loans. You're going to see banks de default, uh, business owners defaulting on their loans and banks are going to have to sock away more money. No, you bought all those treasuries when you had all that boom going on at a very low rate. You don't have the money to sock away. So, Gerald, you know, I'm sure this jobs report is going to be used by the Biden people as, you know, an indication that things are on the upswing. Bidenomics is working, as he often says. But you're saying this is really just an illusion. Yeah, doesn't mean it, it means very little because the people are suffering. You know, they're having a very hard time. Everybody I talk to complains about the price of groceries, the price of insurance, the price of everything. You know, oh, the numbers came down. Yeah, but they're still way up. Yeah, you know, look what's going. Again, this is very important. As you know, I began my career working on political campaigns in Westchester County, the richest county in America. Right. I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate. And I designed and instructed American politics and campaign technology, which is how to run political campaigns. And I taught it at St. John's University. So I know a thing or two about this. What's going on now doesn't mean anything. The people, this, this is old news by, by uh, the, the campaign really begins uh, after Labor Day, September. What goes on between now and then, very, very, very little. People have very, very short memories. So they're not going to remember what happened in uh, February of the year. Yeah. So there's a lot, lot, they're not going to be able to, capitalize on this well you know gerald they also are saying you know, oh inflation is going down actually it's just the rate of the increase that's gone down a bit but it's still way the hell up over when biden took office correct oh yeah and the other thing too is that one of the reasons why you're seeing inflation going down is the energy prices yeah i mean as we're talking we're looking at brent crude in this about 78 dollars a barrel why is it so low when you have all this tension going on in the Middle East? Because the global economy has slowed down so much. Yeah. So it's a supply and demand issue. Yeah, the United States is pumping out more oil, but that's not that's not what's really doing it. There's it, Germany's in a recession, the fourth largest country in the world, uh, economy in the world, largest in Europe. S France, flatline. Yeah, you know, it's one country after another. They're doing terrible. So you know, the uh, inflation numbers are really brought down a lot, as I said, by the energy prices. So that's what people tune into because they're filling their cars up every day. And the other important element about it is that um, that's not going to last as long as this Middle East war keeps heating up. Yeah. Well, before we get to that, and you've been saying for a while now that, you know, this is going to a larger situation internationally in terms of war. But uh, so come November, will there be anything for Biden to crow about economically? You don't know, because the, the Federal Reserve may lower interest rates dramatically, and that'll artificially pop things up again. But so long, he might. But long term, it's a different story. Oh, yeah. Again, it's, just, it's a con game. You know, people call me a futurist. They said, I'm not a futurist. Nobody could predict the future. There are too many wild cards, whether they're made by man or, or uh, humans or uh, or nature. So, for example, I believe the markets were going to crash. And again, I call the 1987 stock market crash, the dot-com bust, the Asian currency crisis, took out the domain name Panic of 08 in 2007. I thought things would crash again in 2012. They didn't teach me about negative and zero interest rate policy and quantitative easing in economics 101 or graduate school. So what I'm saying, Larry, is they're going to do everything they can to prop up the economy in time for the end of the presidential reality show. And that's all it is. It's a reality show. Well, on that bleak note, Gerald, uh, thanks once again for being here. Again, uh, everybody really start looking at the data of what's going on with the banks. Very, 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 very important because the people will realize how bad things are because when the banking system fails, the equity markets are going to crash. And it's only when the equity market crashes 
that people then realize with their shape they're in. They hide it. But when the bigs go down, the fish rots from the head down. Hmm. Well, we'll be talking again, Gerald, uh, as things uh, we, we assume will be getting worse and worse, uh, although it's still being covered up largely. Yep. But, you know. Yeah, I just want to tell people that, you know, to subscribe to the Trends Journal if you want to read history before it happens, because what we're putting out doesn't come close anywhere else. It's only $2.86 a week. And this week's Trends Journal was almost 200 pages, no ads. And and you could listen to it, too, if you want. You read what you want. It's a magazine. You know, you don't have to read every article. But uh, we're giving what nobody else is giving, not even close. Yeah, Gerald, uh, a tribute to you. I mean, people don't realize uh, the background that you have and, and how how on target you've been all these years and, and what's in the Trends Journal. And also, you used to be um, uh, on all the news networks. Uh, your, your expertise w w was uh, sought after, but uh, then you went against the narrative and no more Gerald Salenti in the mainstream media. <laughs> yeah. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about that before we wrap it up? Well, I used to be on Oprah a couple of times, Today show all the time, Good Morning America, Fox, Fox and Friends, NPR, uh, all over the, all over the world. And, um, and especially when we came out with our top trends every year. And one trend we came out with in 2000, for 2001 and when usa today was a big newspaper um they used to it was almost embarrassing i, I used to be on there so few, frequently the headline read 2001 won't be our year trend seer says and i warned that a wave of anti-americanism was sweeping the globe and americans wouldn't be safe at home or abroad and 9 11 happened and then they asked me, how did you forecast this was going to happen? I said, look what Clinton's been doing. The Yugoslav War, Madeleine Albright on 60 Minutes. We met Leslie Stahl. She was the UN ambassador, uh, America's ambassador to the UN. Leslie Stahl asked her, is the price of 500,000 Iraqi children under the age of five that have died as a result of Bill Clinton's sanctions on Iraq and what he's doing to Iraq worth the price? And Madeleine Albright says, yes, it is. And again, what was going on in Israel, on and on and on. And as we used to say again in the Bronx, payback's a bitch. So we saw this coming. So when it happened, they didn't want to hear that. And then the Afghan war began. And I said, America's not going to win. How could you say that? Well, I said, if Alexander the Great couldn't pull it off, if the British at the height of the British Empire into the Valley of Death rode the 600, if Russia couldn't beat them and they're right next door, we haven't won a war since the Vietnam War. It makes you think we're going to win them, beat them. Why, well, you're anti-American is basically what they call me. And I got blacklisted. Yeah. I didn't get back in the news until I came out with the Panic of 08. And a, a small newspaper picked it up, but then writers or AP picked it up and it went everywhere. And then I got they got me back on and then when I started criticizing what the government was doing with the zero, inter the cheap interest rate policy and quantitative easing, nobody wanted to hear that. And that was the end. But I used to be on CNBC. Yeah. 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 And CNBC is the one that's been crowing about uh, what, what a great economy this is now. Uh, and, you know, every, everything's shaping up. Everything's great heading towards the election. And Bidenomics is working. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Gerald, thanks very much for being with us. And uh, we'll be talking again as, as you continue to call the shots as it really is. Thanks a lot, Gerald. And thank you for what you're doing. It's really great. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right. Talk to you again.